Some might look for a cabin in the woods, others might call it a tiny house, and some, well, some might be looking for the ultimate bug out location. My name is Gerolf, and you can pronounce that Gerolf if you like. I grew up in the German countryside, and I spent my childhood mostly playing outside with my friends, and since my village was surrounded by forest, we often went there and explored the remains of derelict buildings we found inside, and often wondered about their purpose. Many of the mostly wooden structures you can still find here today were and are probably used by hunters. Others seem to have been built as weekend destinations for the owners to relax whenever they were tired of the hustle and bustle of their daily lives. To see some of these cabins go to ruins makes me sad, because I believe that spots like these, places of tranquility and rest, are more needed than ever. I have found two particularly sturdily built structures in a forest recently and I want to explore them with you today. But for that we will have to drive for almost two hours to a place closer to where I live now. But right now I'm still filming here, near the town where I was born. So let us take a look at some of the cabins here first before we will go on the road. The first little house we see here is one that I have wondered about since I was a child. It's out on a field in the shadow of some trees, with the actual forest being just a few hundred meters away. I have no idea in which state this wooden structure is from the inside, but from its outside appearance it seems more to me than just a simple hunting cabin. It appears to have a heater of some kind with a little chimney on the roof, and someone has been collecting rainwater here. It even has a quite decorative veranda, which is rather rare in these parts. It's fenced off though and still in use as far as I know, so the insides of this cabin are off limits for us. Here on this little patch of spruce trees is another building that I remember from my childhood days. A simple wooden cabin. The dog's name is Oscar by the way, he's my parents Labrador Retriever, he's 8 years old but still as playful and easily excited as he was when he was a little pup. He sure loves these little exploration adventures just as much as me. Peeking through the window we can see that the roof has collapsed with spruce trees having fallen into the building. It's a simpler cabin than what we saw before, but there are many signs that this was more than just a storage shed or a hunting cabin. The walls were painted white. I can see sports and kitchen equipment in the rubble. On the right hand side we even find an old outhouse with the traditional heart shaped window in the door and even pictures hanging on the walls. This place was clearly used for recreational purposes. Over the door we even see a carved sign, Schau ins Land, literally translated look into the land, was apparently the name of this place. A pity to see it in ruins. Not too far away we find yet another cabin. Bigger than the last one and this time at the edge of the forest. It's another wooden structure and it seems to be falling apart as well if you take a closer look at the roof. But the doors are shut and this place has seemingly not yet fallen victim to vandalism and I am not the one to start that. So I say we leave it be. So, as I mentioned before, I don't live here anymore, but stayed the night at my parents because I bought an old lathe not far from here and drove there again to disassemble it for transport. In my last video, well, I showed a little treasure hunt for tools in this corner of Germany. If you want to see it, a link is down in the video description. And, well, a restoration video of that lathe and, well, of another lathe <laughs> will follow soon. But where are we, anyway? Well, to start off on a really large scale, here is a topographical rendering of Europe. Germany lies smack in the middle. To the south, Germany is framed by the Alps, a mountain range shared by several countries. Here is where Austria and Switzerland, the other mostly German-speaking countries, are. Germany itself only has a rather limited claim to the Alps, while a lot of the middle of Germany is dominated by somewhat lower mountain ranges that we call Mittelgebirge. And you could actually describe this as 
hill country. While the Alps reach nearly 5 kilometers or around 16,000 feet in height, this hill country usually has peaks between 500 and 1,500 meters, which is 5,000 feet tops. To the north, on the other hand, Germany is framed by the North Sea and the Baltic Sea. And the land gets increasingly flat the further north you go. So that's the general situation in Germany. The actual hills or mountains are almost all wooded areas. So here is where you should find good conditions for a lonely cabin in the woods. And right now we are in the Paderborn district, which borders the Teutoburg forest and the Egge mountain range. Some years ago I moved further to the west and the places I will show you next are in a region traditionally called Bergisches Land. Here's a building that a friend showed to me some weeks ago when we were on a hike here. It's a rugged concrete structure with a garage door in the front. It has an ordinary door on one side though and that door is open. I actually shared this with you in a little video I made recently. The link is down in the video description. Back then it was still snowing around here and in that video we explored the insides of this building and we saw that it once was connected to the power grid with actual three-phase power, that it had plumbing and even a wood heater with chimney. In a back room we also found an old table saw for making firewood probably. I've since talked to my friend whose family has been using the nearby forest for logging for many years. We have tracked down the owner. My buddy's dad knows him and he's an old man in his 80s, now living in a completely different part of the country. He will probably never use this property again. But for the moment we still don't know if we could somehow buy it or use this property in the future. But we will sure keep an eye on it. Maybe I will just close the entrances and prevent further vandalism until there is a decision. But upon returning to this place I found more structures in this forest that I want to show you as well. First let's climb these stairs on the left hand side of this building, revealing the only window of this little house. We can now also see that the roof might have been used as a balcony of sorts as well. Climbing higher we can see that there is another structure, this time a more traditional wooden cabin as it seems. It was apparently connected to the power grid as well though. The roof, which must have collapsed some time ago, was made from proper tiles. Whoever built these structures had access to proper materials. But this cabin probably fell out of use and deteriorated over the years. Vandalism might have played some role here as well. So what you see here is what happens when people sit on properties and don't do anything with it. Why not just sell it as long as there is still some value to it? Well, but be that as it may, this place is lost. But not far away I found another building, maybe just as interesting as the concrete structure. A little creek with crystal clear water is running in this valley, only a few meters from this building here. Its front is almost entirely overgrown with ivy, which makes it almost invisible from this perspective. But if you look closer you can see that it looks just like a tiny house that was built against the side of this hill. It has three windows plus a fourth one in the attic. The roof itself is made from fiber cement panels, which were partially replaced by a corrugated iron though. And from the looks of it, that cannot be longer ago than a few years maybe. If one were to use this building it would be smart to get rid of the fiber cement paneling, because these panels probably contain some asbestos fiber. The attic itself is empty, but it appears that there is isolation under the roofing and it also appears to hold, it's dry here. 
We enter the steel door then. It was certainly quite rusty already, but I still think that someone pried it open. The main room has a concrete floor that used to be covered in wood, which was partially ripped off. A second smaller room reveals rubble under the former wooden floor covering. And I first thought this was part of the foundation, but it appears to be a basement room that was filled up with loose stones. The ceiling was poured from concrete. Returning into the main room, we find a manhole-sized opening that reveals another basement room. Since I don't have a ladder or rope with me, I can't go down there right now, but I'm trying to film this. This time, we see random clutter scattered about. A second smaller opening allows me to peek into another subterranean room. These are two pictures I was able to take. We can see a doorway leading into another room there. So what do you think was the purpose of this building? Leave a comment below. Outside the house is this hatch here. And there also appears to be a side entrance to this building that is now blocked with earth or stone. Maybe this building was once used for some kind of water management purpose. I'm not sure. All I can say is right now that if we were to remove the ivy, fix it up, maybe replace the roof, this would be an awesome place. So what's my plan here anyway? Why even look for buildings like this? Well, I simply always had a fascination with places like these and I don't want them to just rot away. In a world where more and more people are longing for a place to find some peace and be outside in nature. It's not just about me though, I don't need to own a place like this for myself. But I would like to restore one of these buildings and then come out here now and then and just go hiking, maybe do some wood carving, things like that. The restoration would also be a wonderful YouTube project. And this doesn't need to be just for one person, we could try to reclaim places like these as a community and we could share them in a group. Someone could be here one day, someone else the next week. And to get a little conspirational, imagine we could just have a number of these little safe houses scattered throughout various regions or even countries. A friend needs some time off in nature, well, here are the keys. But yeah, I'm just dreaming here. And I still want to hear your opinion about all this. Please leave a comment if you think that this is a cool idea. Do you want me to return with a letter and explore those basement rooms? Well then please give the video a like. If you want to support me in my efforts, be it this project or other restoration projects, you can also become a supporter on Patreon under patreon.com slash tpai or maybe make a donation via PayPal. A link for that is down in the video description. If you want to contact me with an idea concerning these cabins in these woods here, you can also send me an email at inventordonations at gmail.com. See you soon.